Oh, wow. Okay. So the series that we have uh, starting next week, man, it is going to be a banger, you know. So it's going to be one of those. It's going to be a no-miss series. Uh, going to be looking forward to that happening next weekend. But as for this weekend, as John had mentioned, is that we're wrapping up this current se series, and it's really all about taking uh, a step of faith deeper from wherever it is that you're at in your spiritual journey. And we got all kinds of people either in the room or online that are all different kinds of places when it comes to spiritual journey. Maybe you would categorize yourself as a curious skeptic. Maybe you're not really a God, Bible, Jesus person. This thing you're just kind of investigating, you're checking out, you're not so sure about it. You know, this is a series for you. Or, or maybe you're a person that would consider themselves a hungry novice. You know, you're, you're thinking about uh, this new relationship with Jesus that you've started. Maybe you're thinking about being baptized next weekend, and you're thinking about ways to grow. This is a series for you. And it's also a series for those of you that might identify yourself as the restless veteran. You know, you've been around a while. You know, your Bible is, uh, you know, kind of worn and dog, uh, dog eared and stuff. But if you were to be honest with yourself and with us, is that you're a little bit uh, restless. You're a little bored. And uh, boredom has set in, and you know that that's not a good thing, and you're hoping to do something about it. And we started this series saying that here uh, in the series, uh, it's not a, uh, a good series for those of you that are a casual coaster. You know, you're not going to put a whole lot out of it. But, you know, I thought I'd walk back that statement from four uh, uh, sessions ago because I really do think that if you're a curious coaster, that this series is for you as well because, because I think uh, where we've been and where we're going this time might spark in you something uh, that, uh, that would really cause you to desire more in your spiritual life. Now, I bet that can happen because... Wherever you are in your spiritual journey, I mean, we can all agree on this, is that nobody strives to be shallow. You know, just nobody does. I mean, shallow's not all that great, right? I mean, we don't value shallow, do we? Shallow thinking, shallow relationships. Who wants those? Shallow content? No one's driving for that stuff. And shallow faith? I mean, really? I mean, we're going to settle for a faith that is shallow? No, no. No, 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 nobody strives for shallow, and yet, and yet that's where people can find themselves. And if you've ever wondered why, well, I'm going to tell you why towards the end of our time together, okay? So hang in there with me until the end, all right? But as we begin, I thought that we begin by trying to get real clear on what we mean by faith. All right, so let's go ahead and define faith this way. Uh, faith is gritty, gutsy, real life confidence in God. That's what faith is. And we began to wonder together about how to become a person who has that, who has that kind of deep, amazing faith. And, and, and so in week one of our series that we saw Jesus encounter people uh, with some with deep faith and some with with a lack of faith, and when uh, Jesus encountered those people, it was th that, that kind of faith that frankly amazed him, you know, both, you know, plus and minus. And, and no wonder, because you see, the scriptures tell us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that without faith, it's impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that, number one, he exists, and that he, number two, rewards those who earnestly seek him. That, that, was, uh, that was in week one. Now, now, now in, week two, in week two, we decided to let go of the bottle and pick up the fork. Together, that's what we decided to do. You know, right? We decided to become a self-feeder and to build into our lives the really important rhythms of studying the scriptures and prayer. And I know that a number of us decided that that would be the time uh, for us to take this uh, Gospel of Mark reading plan that we've developed for you uh, that you can get out in the lobby and then just begin uh, to spend some time discovering Jesus through Mark's biography of Jesus' life. And it's good, really a great uh, uh, book that we get a chance to, uh, to work through because it sets us up for a study that we're going to be doing in Mark coming up in about a month, and that's been fantastic. And then last week, week three. Week three is that we discovered that we is greater than me. And, and we know this, right? I mean, we know that we need people, and we know that people need us. And, and we know that it's really wise for us to form a team. And, and we've been telling you that, that life groups here at Terranova is a really great place to team with people. 
It's a great place to find your teammates. And it's an exciting uh, season that we're in because life groups are now kicking off. We're in the kickoff phase, and yet there's still time to join a group. You can go ahead and find that group. Sign up on your app, or you can sign up online. We'd love to have you find those teammates that you're looking for. Now, 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 in, in doing this series, I just got to tell you, it's just been really fun to start the year, year off, uh, doing it this way. Uh, it's, it's been, you know, the month of January. But I got to tell you is that during this time, uh, I know that some of us have been a little distracted, distracted by the NFL playoffs. All right? Football fan, I know you. Uh, and, and I know where you're coming from because all month long, I mean, we've had NFL playoffs and the playoffs have been amazing, Right? I mean, are you with me? Football fans, let's hear from you. Okay, so we've got, you know, grunting, yelling, you know, getting in the three-point stance, ready to go. Now, now I know, I know, I, I'm probably in saying that adding to the polarization of our society because, because some people think, you know, football is just a really stupid thing and a total waste of time. And why would you spend three and a half hours, you know, burning, you know, time that you can never get back in your life, you know, uh, watching, you know, the game on TV, while others of us... It, others of us is that, you know, we work real hard trying to get through the Christmas season so that we can get to the real goodies in January, right? With the NFL playoffs. Now, now, if you're a football fan, you've got to recognize this guy. Here he is. This is the GOAT. All right, Tom Brady, the GOAT, greatest of all time, and I will tell you why. Tom Brady has played football in the National Football League for 22 seasons. He has quarterbacked teams that have won seven Super Bowls. He himself, during the seven Super Bowls, became the Super Bowl MVP five different times. And at 44 years old, he has been the oldest player in this NFL season. I mean, you know, he's older than many of the coaches that he competes against. He's older than the coach of the Green Bay Packers. He's older than the coach of the San Francisco 49ers. And he's older than the coach of your Los Angeles Rams, who, by the way, beat Brady last weekend, but that's another topic. Now, 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 Brady, Brady, you need to understand that he started out not all that impressive. He was drafted in the sixth round. He was the 199th pick of the NFL draft. And, and I want to show you a picture from the draft combine that we have here of, of Brady. Here he is with his shirt off, okay? It's kind of the before and after picture. Uh, on the left side, Brady uh, straight out of the University of Michigan. And then on the other side is that we have Brady hoisting the, uh, the NFL trophy, the Super Bowl winning team for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the season before, right? So Brady, here we have Brady is that you can see, even though this picture is kind of fuzzy because I mean this picture was taken 22 years ago is you know probably taken by like you know you know one of those instagraphic you know uh you know point and shoot cameras you know that you had to take down to Walgreens to get the photos you know, developed right so it's a bit fuzzy but but you can see clearly Brady has a dad bod he's got a dad bod now maybe you've heard that term dad bod let me give you a definition from it straight out of something that we call the urban dictionary a dad bod is this here comes the definition. There it is, dad bod. Dad bod is a male body type that is best described as softly round. <laughs> it's built upon the theory that once a man has found a mate and fathered a child, he doesn't need to worry about maintaining a sculpted physique. So, so you see how this works. I mean, if human bodies were sea mammals, dad bod would be more like a grazing manatee than a speedy dolphin, right? I mean, that dad bod is more mudslide than mountain, more soft serve than sorbet, more mashed potatoes than skinny fries. And as, as for Tom Brady, as for Tom Brady, take a look again, is that, that he had the dad bod coming right out of college. He, he wasn't married. He didn't have... Any kids, but, but, now, but now he is more fit at 44 than he was at 22. How in the world did that happen? Well, well, what we come to find out is that as Brady aimed to prolong his career is that he was captured by a very simple premise. It was calories in and calories out. Calories in. Let's talk about the calories in part because, see, Brady has kind of developed uh, this whole... Uh, uh, diet program that he calls the TB12 diet. And, and the, the TB12, the, in the TB12 diet, everything is organic. I mean, I mean, there's only stuff from nature, nothing processed. That means, that means no white flour, no sugar, 
no gluten, no caffeine, none of that stuff, plus, plus water. Brady's really big into drinking water. And so here's Brady's formula uh, for water consumption. And you can go ahead and try this out. Is that you take your body weight, divide it by two, and then that number, you drink that in ounces every day. All right? Try it sometimes. You'll feel like you're drowning. But, but that's what he does. And he just recognizes, you know, that it's, a, it's all about calories and it's all about the fuel that he needs to, uh, to drive his body. And, 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 and while uh, we've, you know, touched on some pretty Spartan stuff, just know this, is that Tom has said that uh, when he um, uh, desires a piece of, of bacon is that he eats a piece. And, and so we know that this guy's human after all. So, so that's the calories in, but let's talk about the calories out because Tom Brady's workout regimen has been well documented with the number of, uh, of planks that he does and crunches that he does and lunges that he does and squats that he does. Plus, in the off-season, he mixes in some surfing. So, so there you have it. You know why I like this guy. Now, now why does he do it? Why did he do it? Why, uh, well, it's because he wanted to be the oldest, greatest, most fit quarterback of all time. And he did something about it. And, and as a bonus, he ends up looking physically really, really good, which leads us to this question. What do we do when we don't like the way we look spiritually? Be because, and we're asked that question because maybe you're a little dissatisfied where how things are looking for you spiritually, about how things are going spiritually. Perhaps, perhaps you feel a little surprised and how little difference being a Christian seems to make. Uh, maybe you, perhaps you feel a little disappointed with the way that your relationship with God, this Christian thing, this spiritual thing, just seems to go ups and downs, peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys, your faith does. Maybe perhaps you feel like you're in a rut. Well, well to get out of that rut, maybe you're thinking there's some change that needs to happen, and the change that, that you're thinking should happen works like this. You're thinking, well, the more that God works, the deeper my faith will get. The more God works, the deeper my faith will get. And yep, yep, uh, we think that the more that I do the stuff that we've been talking about in this series, reading your Bible, praying, gathering with others, is that we figure we begin to do those things is that I'm going to move out of the shallows and I'm going to move into a life of deep faith. And you'd be right, mostly. See, we are going to need to add one more critical ingredient, one last thing. We're not going to get there unless we add this one last thing that we're going to discover together in a letter that Paul writes uh, to a, some friends of, him, of his that live in a place called Philippi. And so uh, I would invite you to take a copy of the scriptures if you brought a copy and turn it to uh, the book of Philippians chapter two. That's where we're gonna be at today. Uh, you can go ahead and pull that out. You could also pull out that outline uh, that John talked to you about and, and uh, follow along using the outline. The outline is also provided for you on that uh, Terra Nova app. And so if you're watching at home, you might wanna use the app. Uh, that would be fantastic. And let me just give you a little bit of background about Philippians and about what we're about to read. Uh, so, so this letter to the Philippians was written by this guy named Paul. Sometimes he's known as St. Paul or the Apostle Paul. And uh, Paul is this iconic figure of the first century uh, because uh, of the way that he started out. He started out, starts out his adult life being this Christian hater, actually this Christian hunter. And then through a miraculous moment it, is that his worldview gets turned upside down. And, and then in due time, he emerges as, as one of the leaders of the early Jesus movement. And he travels all over the known world telling people the good news of Jesus. And one of those places that he went was this place called Philippi. And so he's writing this letter to his Philippian friends, probably from a prison cell that he's in. It's the, the, the year is right around 60 AD. Um, and he's writing to a church that he actually started. And you can read about that start in Acts chapter 16. Uh, it's kind of fun reading to get the backstory there uh, and just understand that it's a very colorful, a very diverse church that Paul was able to plant. And, and, and so he's uh, writing then to these people who are uh, living in the Roman province of Macedonia, inland about 10 miles from the Aegean Sea, and they were very important people to him because he knew them personally. And so we're going to look at, at Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 15, but in a way that 
might feel a little different to you because what we're going to do is kind of turn it upside down a bit and we're going to rewind the tape. We're going to look at uh, four verses of scripture here, but we're going to look at it in reverse order. Okay, we're going to start at the end verse first. That's how we're going to do it. And, and you're going to see why here in just a moment because, because uh, I think it's going to help us just understand where it is that he's driving. Because well, I want us to start off with the results, right? I mean, let's talk about the results here for a minute and uh, let's talk about the end game and, and that Paul then is saying, hey, guys, if you hold to my words, here's what's going to happen. Here's the results. He says the results are, again in verse 15, he says, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. <laughs> what he's saying here is, guys, 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 if you hold to my words, okay, what I'm writing to you is that here's what's going to happen. You'll stand out. You'll stand out in the same way a 44-year-old quarterback that leads the league in passing yardage and in touchdowns thrown and in passing percentage and, you know, is doing all these amazing things. I mean, you'll stand out like that. You'll stand out, but, but here you'll stand out not in a game, but as a light in a dark world. So, so you need, we all need to know is that light was a really big deal back in the first century. Uh, you know, it, was, it took a lot of effort to create uh, light. You know, the things that make light, you know, things like candles and things like lanterns. But, but, but then there was the light that was, that was always there. It was always consistent. It was supernatural in its origin. It wasn't made by man. It was the stars. It was the stars. And so, so, so you can see that, that Paul wants to, to capture that word picture and present it to his friends and saying, oh, look at the stars. You'll be like them. You'll, you'll, you'll be like them. You'll shine like the stars. And, and, and the stars, I mean, the stars, who doesn't notice the stars? Uh, the stars, uh, you know, who isn't comforted by the light of the stars? You'll, you'll be that kind of person. So those are the results. Now, we, we want to try to now to kind of rewind the tape a little bit, and we're going to move up a couple verses, and let's talk about the fuel, all right? What's the fuel behind all this light? It's the calories in. This is what Paul says uh, then in, in a verse before. He says, for it is God who works in you. In you. There's some calories in. <laughs> now, ha have you experienced in your life God pouring into you? Uh, God working in you? You, you know, there's that that, that input, you know, the calories in of, of maybe some, some biblical teaching that you really resonate with. Okay, maybe it's here at Turnover or maybe it's elsewhere. Or, or have you experienced the input of, of just powerful worship music like we've experienced here today and, and then in other places? Have, have you felt uh, the input from a, a Christian book that uh, just really spoke to you? Or, or, or the input of, of a podcast that, you know, every time an episode drops is that you've got to listen to it. Man, th there's so much content out there, isn't there? there there's so much calories out there. Uh, there's so much fuel out there. In fact, there's never been a time in history where, where it's easier to get spiritual calories in. But, but before this, before this, is, is something needs to be added to it. Is it, is it what we have to add, what we need to add now is the calories out. And that's where we bump up to verse 12 and get to our part. The our part, the calories out, is to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, Paul writes. <laughs> uh, I gotta tell you, it's whenever I read Philippians 2 verse 12, I always think what he writes here is just kind of weird. Uh, because, you see, I think it's really easy to misread it like this. Uh, um, oh, I, I don't have that slide, so I'll just have to deal with that. Uh, it's really easy to misread it, to misread it by saying, work for your salvation and be very, very afraid. But, but, but is that what uh, Paul is saying? I don't I think that would make sense for Paul to mean that. You see, you see, he's the guy that keeps reminding us that the salvation is a free gift of God's grace. It can't be earned or deserved. And an example of that, an example of that is here in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. Uh, in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9 is that it says, let's see if we can find it. Uh, go the other way. I probably got the slides in a different order. Okay, bump it up. There we go. Okay, so Ephesians uh, 2, 8, and 9 says, for it is by grace that you've been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no man 
can boast. I mean, that's what Paul says again and again. And, and as far as this fear and trembling part, it doesn't seem to fit the wider context of the book of Philippians because, you see, the overriding theme of the book of Philippians is joy. It, it's all about joy in knowing God, not, not fearing God. And so what do we make of this? Well, a couple decades ago, uh, a pastor and author by the name of Eugene Peterson uh, was uh, up in his cabin in Montana and he was working on a project. It was a, it was a paraphrase of the English Bible, They're trying to take the English Bible and make it into more modern day English that we have come to know as the message. And, and uh, as I understand it is that, that Peterson labored long on, on this verse, Philippians 2.12, and, and what it says here, work out your salvation in fear and trembling. And, uh, and this is how Peterson renders it. All right, let's see if we can find the slide there. Okay. We'll keep going. There, okay, there, there it is. Okay, so here he is. He says, he says, be energetic in your life of salvation, reverent and sensitive before God. In, in, in other words, put your faith into practice and do it like it matters. Now, now, we know the result, and we know the fuel, and we know our part. Let's go ahead now and read it in correct order. All right, Philippians chapter 2. We'll start again with verse 12. It says this. He says, therefore. Okay, therefore. Let's just stop there. So Paul is, is saying, I want to connect this now with what I've said up to this point in chapter 2, uh, and what I have told you about is, uh, is Jesus and how he gave us this amazing example of humility. He says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, you know, hey, we did life together, guys, remember that? Uh, but now, much more in my absence, again, continue to work out your salvation, not for your salvation. Uh, and that's our part, right? Calories out with fear and trembling. He's saying, yeah, guys, Take it seriously. This is no game. For we, we can do this knowing that it's God who works in you, right? Calories in. That's his part where he stills in us calories in to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. And then he goes on in verse 14 and he says, he says, do everything without grumbling or arguing, which, of course, are the things that steal joy. It just suck joy out of the room. Uh, instead, verse 15, he says, so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. All right, all the way back then, 2,000 years ago, Paul is looking into society. He's looking into culture. He's looking into sometimes what the scriptures refer to as the world. And he's saying it's warped and it's crooked. And have you noticed then just things have not changed much in 2,000 years, have they? It's just all the same. It's the same, it's, uh, the same place that Paul lived in, a place that is marred by sin, a place that is a battlefield, a, a place that is fallen. But, but, but then, he says, then, then, there, and here's the result, is that you will shine among them like stars in the sky as you hold firmly to the word of life. So, so that word of life, by the way, that's a phrase that Paul uses for Jesus himself. And so he says, man, you just need to hang on tight to Jesus as you do this. He says, and then I'll be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. Now, why can't he? Well, it's because all of this worked together to take them out of the shelves and into deep faith. See, and, and I think that all that Paul is saying here can really be boiled down to simply this, simply this, and here it is. To work out what God is working in. Work out what God is working in. And that's how you change the way you look, spiritually. And you know, and, you, know you can't do it sitting down. You can't do it on the, from the sidelines. You gotta get into the game. You put your faith into practice. You, you, you see, deep faith, is one that is exercised. We work it out. We find that faith is something that grows through use. And why we need to hear this is because, is because a lot of us are sitting on the sidelines, but we think that we're okay because, because we're getting knowledge. 
we're, we're taking in content, and, and as we've said, there's lots of content out there, guys, all within the stroke of a keyboard or all within the palm of your phone. Uh, it's so great to have all of those things and, and all the things that we can know. It's fantastic, but, but understand, understand, is it deep? Deep is not a collection of knowledge. Deep is a collection of applied knowledge. Now, I think that over the last 22 months, as we've been thrust into this COVID world, is that it, it may have made many of us content collectors, knowledge collectors. Because face it, is that we can tune in to, to any speaker, any Bible teacher, anywhere around the world and hear what they have to say. And, and that we can also uh, dial up any worship team that we want to hear sing. But you know what that can form? A lifestyle that's frankly very sedentary. <laughs> you know, we're, we're knowing much, but we're not moving much. And uh, we need to, I think, notice that, that if, if calories are going in and very little are going out, that's a problem. If calories are going in and, and very little is coming out, is that, you know, you know how things end up, right? You're going to be spiritually fat, not spiritually fit. Now, now there, there's another way, though. And, and we can take Paul's plan for deep faith and we can make it into a lifestyle. In other words, in other words, we can work out what God is working in. We can take calories in, but then burning calories, making the most, getting fit, being lean and mean. <laughs> you know what we need, guys? We need a workout plan. We need a workout plan. Uh, simply getting going with working out what God is working in. And, and we can take all of that great input and we should seek great input, all the calories in, and then begin to act on it. That's the calories out. And so I want to suggest to you a four-part workout plan that you and I can together decide that we are going to pursue. So let's go ahead and take a look at this workout plan. And here's the first part of the plan. Number one. Number one is to serve. It's a serve. And see, see so here, here at Turnover is that, that we believe that we just follow the way of Jesus when we serve because we know the scripture says the Son of Man didn't come to be served but to serve. And, and so we try uh, then to just create this culture of, of service um, where we serve one another. Um, at Terranova, there's lots of different ways to do this. It's just kind of how we roll. It's what we do. We come here on the weekends. There's all different opportunities to do that, whether uh, it's handing out programs as a guest service uh, team member or helping with the reset of the room just to make the room look good and nice, uh, to uh, working with the next generation uh, of our church in you know, Supernova kids or our junior high kids or our high school kids. Lots of different ways to play. Lots of different ways to serve that are on the weekend. And the people that do that, you know what they're doing? They're burning calories, folks. And they're looking good. They're looking really good. And, and, uh, and of course, this whole serve thing is not just the domain of what we do on the weekends. Really, where it gets good at Terra Nova is what we do in the community throughout the week. And, and that we've scheduled regular ways for us to be able just to love and serve people. One of those ways is uh, serving meals at the Orange County Rescue Mission Village of Hope on every third Saturday. Is that something that all of us can do and that you can sign up for? And then uh, throughout the... Um, uh, throughout the year, just about every month, is that we've got a, uh, an opportunity that we create for all of us to do something together to serve. And the one that's coming up next month is Serve Day at the Abbey. And uh, if you haven't been uh, to Orange County Rescue Mission's property that they have acquired at the end of El Toro Road, you've got to get up there and see for yourself what's going on. We've been taking some teams up there uh, for the last uh, number of months and uh, been spending Saturday mornings that are there. We rock up at 9 o'clock in the morning and we get to work on the projects that that, uh, that the leaders um, uh, uh, have uh, set up for us. Uh, we work hard until noon. We have lunch together. And then after lunch, there's options. Uh, you can either uh, take the tour and, uh, and see the Abbey, hear the story. You can uh, work some more or you can leave. And uh, it's just a really powerful uh, time for us. Uh, and we've done things like this um, throughout the year. And uh, many of you have been uh, involved in things like we've done, like the 4th of July parade and kids feeding kids and, and, and things that we're doing together, clean lake for us was something that we did as well. Uh, we just want to be out in the community making God's love famous. We want to serve our community. We just want to do that. Because, and as we do, you know what we find? We're burning some calories. 
All this good input that we have gets to flow out and things get good. Things get good, that's the first part of the workout plan. Here's the second part of the workout plan. And that's to be kind and generous. To, to be kind and generous, which is, which is kind of the flip side of what Paul was telling the Philippians to say, hey, do everything without grumbling or complaining, all right? So this is the alternative to grumbling and complaining. It's to be kind and generous. Maybe you've got a problem with grumbling and complaining. Well, this is what you can replace it with. It's being kind and generous. And, and, and as we do that is that we're just reflecting the calories in that we receive from God because you know what? God has been so kind to us. God is always demonstrating his kindness to us. And, and, and God is so generous to us. I mean, God has, has blessed us with resources and, and, uh, and experiences and things, frankly, beyond for many of us, beyond our imagination if we really stop to think about it. So understand is that these things have flowed into our lives. Now we want to work out what God is working in. And, and, and so here's the challenge, is that we want to be kind to people who don't deserve it. <laughs> right? And then we want to be generous over the top. You know, just, you know, not, I mean, extravagantly generous, okay? Not just, oh, this won't, you know, hurt much. I'll just go ahead and, and give this way. But, I mean, we just really want to go for it. And I got to tell you guys, it's going to be challenging. But here's the good news, right? Is that any workout plan worth its salt has got to have some challenge to it, right? It's got to have some challenge to it. You know that. You know that. Okay, and speaking of challenge, you're going to love this next one. Number three, third part of the workout plan is to do this, is to initiate a spiritual conversation. How do you like that? Is that like the most taboo thing in our culture? You know, I mean, you know, we're walking around. Sometimes it feels like walking around on eggshells because it feels like, you know, the cultural rules are, uh, yeah, you don't talk about this God, Bible, Jesus stuff. You know, you just don't with people. You know, you'll freak them out and they won't like it and they won't like you. <laughs> and, yet, and, and yet, if you've found Jesus... And, and he's important in your life. If he's the most important thing in your life, you're always going to talk your head off about the thing that you're, the most important thing in your life, the thing that you're passionate about. I mean, you're just going to talk your full head off, okay? You're going to do it in appropriate ways. But, and let me share with you then some, some on-ramps that we can do that because you might be saying, well, I don't even know where to begin with this. Well, well, let me just share with you just two ideas here. One would be just to start with the people that are around and just to share with them what you're learning, so you can begin to initiate a conversation around the water cooler when there was such a thing. I know, we're all working online, right? But still, work with me. But, you know, initiating a conversation with people that we meet and just to ask them and say, hey, so, like, what are you learning this week? Huh? Well, you know, it's always good to learn stuff. What are you learning? It's like, ah, you know, and then they'll scratch their head and maybe say something that they learned. Maybe they learn a new recipe or maybe they learn, you know, like a new channel on YouTube, you know, and learn how to do something. And then they might return fire and ask, so what are you learning? And then you can begin to talk about and say, so I go to this church called Terranova and here's what I'm learning. And then you can just kind of unpack what you're learning on the weekends or in your life group and say, so here's what I'm learning. It's really changing me. It's great stuff. And to see where that conversation goes, that's the first idea that I have or the first on-ramp. The second is, uh, is to offer prayer to people is that you find someone, you begin talking, things begin to move from just the news, weather, and sports kind of casual conversation to something heavy where there's a need, and just to uh, pull up and just saying, hey, so could I pray for you about that? And, uh, and see what they say. And you could take it even a step further and saying, can I pray for you about that, and can we do it right now? Ah, you know, can I even do that? It's like, yeah, you can do that. It's challenging, guys. It's challenging, but you know what? Any good workout plan has got challenge to it, right? I mean, isn't that true? Orange Theory people, isn't that true? CrossFit people, isn't that true? Peloton people, isn't that true? Uh, it's true. Uh, you know, we know that. Strava people, we know that that's true. We, we know it's true, and so the challenge is good for us. The challenge is good for us. Any workout plan has got the good combination of calories in and calories out. And then here's the last one. Uh, number four, the fourth element, is to invite someone to church. Uh, and, and we just feel like that this is a very strategic one because uh, as we've discovered just gathering together, either here in person or online, is that there's just something that's really unique and good and powerful when we gather together. And, uh, and we are committed to helping people understand with clarity uh, the message of God and the person of God. And, and we're trying to do that in, in really practical ways. As John had mentioned, we've got this new series that's coming up that we're really excited about, how not to be your will, your uh, own worst enemy. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I think that you probably already got the gist of where we're going with this, is that this is a series that, that's all about helping us not to self-sabotage our lives, 
to, to help us to identify some self-destructive behaviors that often that we possess and what we do about them. And I'll tell you what's fun about this series is, is it doesn't really matter what you believe about God, Bible, or, the G, or Jesus. I think that this series will be accessible and that people are gonna get this because regardless of what you believe about faith, you probably don't wanna blow up your life. And so what a great opportunity for us to take these cards. We want to try to give you tools by creating a series that we think is a great series to invite people to. This is a really good one. And just creating a simple thing like a card here that I'm hoping that you'll grab or maybe a couple if you're here in person and that you'll use this card. If you're uh, watching online, you might, again, also um, use um, uh, the opportunity to get on social media and such and just share the Terranova experience uh, with others too. And that's another way to actually invite them to church, but you do it virtually. And, and so, so as, as we're kind of rolling out this plan, I mean, you know, we know that it's challenging uh, and, uh, and we know that that's good because we know workout plans should be challenging. But maybe you're thinking, you're thinking, Lyle, um, um, so here's the thing is uh, uh, I'm not really sure I want to do all this because so here's where my headspace is, uh, be, just being honest, because uh, if I don't do it, it's actually not going to be a big deal. It's no biggie if I don't do it, number one. Here's the first reason why. It's because somebody else will. <laughs> I always know that somebody else will pick up the slack, you know? It'll be okay. We got enough people around here. Somebody else will do it. And then number two, number two reason is, you know, there's really no consequences. You know, there's really nothing at stake here. Uh, no. <laughs> you see, people need to know that there's life out there that's truly life. Now, do, now, do you remember the Revelation series that we did back in the fall uh, where John Reed walked us through eight weeks of Revelation? Man, it was a very defining series. If you haven't uh, been acquainted with that series, we got it uh, on uh, the app and you can uh, go ahead and check it out online. But, but it was during that series where our John, Pastor John, talked about John the writer of Revelations, and we got to know him. Sometimes he's known as the Apostle John or St. John's, and he wrote the book of Revelations. It was a revelation given to him, and then we also come to find that he's written a number of different books in the New Testament, one of which was his biography of Jesus' life that sometimes that we know as the Gospel of John, and it was there that John just began to write down and record the things that Jesus did and also the things that he said. And in John chapter 10.10, 10, John records something that Jesus said that I think we need to check out. Here it is. It says this. This is Jesus speaking. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. To the full. Uh, you know, if you're a Christian, you know, a follower of Jesus, do, do you feel that way? Do, do you wake up in the mornings going, oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you, God, because my life is so full. You have given me life to the full. You've given me a John 10, 10 life. Of course you do. I bet you do that. I bet you do that, and I bet that you know that it's just not for you. It's for everyone. And so years later, the same guy, John, this guy that sometimes we know as the Apostle John or St. John, is that, that he writes a letter to some, some followers of Jesus that are in this Christian community. And, and towards the end of this letter, he's kind of wrapping up the letter and kind of closing the letter out. And he kind of sums it all up this. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, he says this. He says, hey guys, this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life and this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. So, there is a lot on the line, isn't there? There is a lot on the line, after all. S -s See, it's like this. I believe that there is a whole world out there looking for life that is truly life, real life. And this, guys, is our moment to live a life that is distinct and attractive and compelling, the way that Paul would describe it, is that we're to shine like the stars in the sky. And, 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 and we know, because we've already touched on this, is that this workout plan of calories in and calories out, is that it's going to be challenging. We know, we, we know that it's going to be challenging. Going deep is always challenging. Being deep is always challenging. So, 
So, so to help us meet the challenges, I just wanna share with you as we wrap things up, just one last word of an, an encouragement uh, that I think will help. And, and as I do, I just wanna begin by giving you the heads up that, that at the end, I, you know, uh, we're at the end here, and that I told you at the beginning is that we would talk a little bit about why so many people punt on the idea of being deep and settle for shallow. We know that no one strives to be shallow, but many strive to be safe, and comfortable and in control. Let's face it. Let, 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 let's face it. Is that's the more common narrative. That's the prime directive it would seem to be in our culture is that you can and you should have these things. And you can spend your way to them or you can vote your way to them. But by all means, is you've got to get these things. You've got to strive to be safe and comfortable and in control. Now, I gotta say something about this, and, and as I do, let me just let you know, you just need to understand something about me, is that I'm the kind of guy that wears his seat belt when I drive my car, okay? So just, just so you know. Uh, you, you need to know is that I'm the kind of guy that does not sleep on a bed of nails or take cold showers. I'm that guy. I take warm showers and I sleep in a soft bed. And you need to know is that I'm the kind of guy that does like to know outcomes and likes to know what is going to happen next. But I need to tell you that the greatest, most stretching, most thrilling moments of my life was when God led me to places where I wasn't safe, and where I wasn't comfortable, and where I felt pretty out of control. And guys, I gotta tell you, I would not trade those experiences for anything. Now, now, and maybe that's, maybe that's your story too. Uh, 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 you know, uh, maybe your story is that there was something that happened in your life history that caused you to pass on what you thought was safe and comfortable and controllable so that you could go deep. <laughs> and it's just like that that jumping off that high dive, that diving board experience, right? That was, that was so scary, so scary at the very beginning, but then when you did it, it was such, such a thrill. So scary, but then so worth it. You saw the risk of serving. You saw the risk of being kind and the risk of being generous. You saw, you saw the risk of, of talking to people about your relationship with God. Oh man, what if I screw up? What if I say the wrong thing? You, you took the risk. You took the risk of inviting somebody to church, inviting somebody to Terra Nova. You did all that. And you know what you were doing? You were just working out what God was working in. And I bet, I bet it wasn't boring. And I bet you felt deeper because you were working out what God was working in. So imagine, imagine with me if we all did this, all of us. If we, if we all came out of the shallows and we decided to work out what God was working in. And when that happens, and when that happens, we're going to be confident with God. Our faith is going to go deeper, and it's going to become more powerful to us and more compelling to the world around us. And so let's trust God that he can get us there as we pray together. So why don't you bow with me as we close. Lord, we really do want to shine like stars. God, we want to stand out. We want to live a compelling life. We recognize that the, there are stakes and consequences in the way that we live our lives. Lord, we want to live life that is truly life. Would you help us? Uh, Lord, would you help us, God? Because we just want to tell you is that we're ready for motion and we're ready for meaning. We are ready for the deep. And, and so, Lord, as best as we know how, that we want to say we'll place confidence in you, that you will take our lives, God, and do something beautiful and meaningful and powerful with each of us, God, uh, in, in deeper and greater ways as the days unfold. And so, Lord, just, we just pray that you would give each one of us, God, just the wisdom to know what to do with what we've just heard and then the courage to do it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
Well, hey, everybody, just want to thank you guys again so much for coming to Turn Over. And as we wrap things up, I just want to remind you uh, to uh, spend a little bit of time getting ready. That Connect card that John uh, talked to you about, we'd love to have that card. A number of different ways you can get that card to us. Really would love to hear from everybody. Also wanted to continue to let everybody know is that uh, a part of the way that we uh, express life together as a community is through the offering, worshiping God in that way, a number of different ways um, for you to do that. And so we encourage you to participate um, as you can. And then we're looking forward to having everybody back next week, get the cards out, inviting our friends, seeing what's going to happen as we jump into our new series. So God bless you guys. We'll see you next week here at Turnover.